What's up everyone? Welcome back to Brookboy Custom. My name is Alex and I'm very excited to be back with you working on some stuff. Today I'm going to be putting a stereo in the S10. The S10 still has a stock 1992 stereo. One speaker works, only FM works. It's pretty rad, but I need, I need that, I need that. Bluetooth in my life. You know what I mean? I went through all my old stuff. You guys know I only drive radio cars. Since I was 18, I've only driven radio cars, and every single one of those cars had a system in it, except the Miata. And the Miata is the exception because there's no room in it. Like, there's just no space for a box. I do plan on doing some kind of roll cage mounted sub in it at some point, but for right now, this is gonna be my vehicle with a system in it. So, I went through a bunch of my old stuff, and I found a couple things. So I found a couple of radios and I found one of my subs. This radio used to be at my buddy's Toyota Corolla. He had a nice system in it. He said, hey, for 75 bucks, you can take whatever you want. I grabbed the speakers, I grabbed everything, you know, everything I could grab. So this came out of that. This is only aux in though. It works fine back when I had an Android and back when I had um, older iPhones, but now I have an iPhone 8, so that's not really an option. More particularly, because of my iPhone, the charging port's broken, so everything's got to be wireless. So I can't use this one. This one's a good, you know, backup radio for another car. I do have this one. This one is a flip up unit by Car Duel. I bought this brand new from Walmart for 150 just to find out all the auto zones and auto parts had the same radio for 100 bucks. But this is a great stereo. I originally bought it for my Roadmaster. From since then, it went from my Roadmaster to my Subaru. And you know what? This is going to be the one that's going in the truck. This one's great because it has a flip up screen. It does have reverse camera option, which later on down the road, if I decide to get one when I start towing with this truck, I will go get it. Um, it's Bluetooth, it has all the call functions and all that. Not bad bang for buck because units like this tend to be around 300. So um, this is going to be recycled into this truck. This is my single channel 300 watt amp kicker amp. I blew so many windows out with this thing, more particularly in my Subaru. This used to be in a really fun setup that I used to have on my Subaru. I rounded this in the spare tire area with, with the speaker. And if you guys are familiar with Mighty Car Mods, they did that spare tire mounted speaker. I love the idea because it literally takes up the same space as a spare tire. So I found an old 14 inch tire, made my adapter ring, I mounted a 12 inch sub in that, and it was a really fun setup. This is later on for tonight. I'm gonna be running this. I'm gonna be running um, extra wires for that later on. There's plenty of room. That's the great thing about the extended cab in this. This backspace is literally only going to be storage. There are back seats here, but they're useless. Only kids can fit back there. So I'm just going to put my box somewhere in the middle. Um, I'll do another video making a box. And it's going to be a good time. So for right now, we're going to focus on this. So those of you lovely lads who don't have an S10, this guide is going to help a lot with any radio install. Particularly with an S10, it'll help a lot. Every radio I installed pretty much is the same process. It's very, very simple. There's not a lot to it. Um, you could find a wiring diagram for these right off the internet. If you guys want to spend a little bit more money, um, for most vehicles, there are adapters that you can get that will plug and play into your harness. I am a broke boy, that's who I am, so I never spend the extra money, I always find the wiring diagram, find out, okay, what switch power, what is constant power, what is ground, and from there I find out, okay, so what is the antenna if the car has an antenna, what is left speaker positive, negative, what is right speaker positive, negative, what's left rear positive, negative, and so on and so forth. It's very simple, you know, I work at this golf cart shop. I do it all the time, and it's the same process for every radio. So the adapter kit that I got, literally off Amazon. This one's specific for GM vehicles. They are very universal ones out there, but if you could find you know, one for your make, it makes it a lot easier. They tend to be a little bit fit, better fit and finish. Basically, there's gonna be a lot of 
adapters in here. There's gonna be tabs I might have to rip off here and there, whatever the case is. So you just gotta find your vehicle in the list of vehicles in here and you'll be fine. If you Google or if you search on Amazon or eBay, your vehicle and then you know stereo install kit you'll find one of these very easily let's get to it the hardest part about this and it's not that hard at all is to figure out how to remove your front fascia most vehicles you can google it and they'll be they'll be available if not really all you gotta do is just do some night pulls you know check every crevice look at that screw screw i'll take those two screws off i'll do some light pulling here and there and if Pulling on it, doesn't release it, check somewhere else. Maybe the screws in here. Oh, look at that, there are screws in there. You know, and you just, just go look around, look for screws, don't pull too hard. You do some light pulls, because vehicles like to use a lot of clips. So, just do some light pulls. Once you get your front fascia out, you can get an idea how to get your radio out, and then you unplug your battery. Do some light pulls, take your accessories out. Here's some light poles. See, see what's holding them up. And look at that. There's a screw right there. The whole thing comes right off. Look at that. I have an idea for this, Tom. I don't know if it'll work, but I have an idea. So we got one bolt here. One bolt here. It looks like it's about an 8 millimeter. Let's find out. Okay, cool. I'm gonna plug my battery now. All right. Okay. Why are you so tough? It's like, are the clips? Oh, hello. So, I managed to get it this much. And you can see, kind of back there, is the connector. Maybe. I don't know. So, I'm going to try to get a screwdriver in there and disconnect the connector. And I'll get back to you. So, she got manhandled and she got out. So, that's all that matters. So, basically, these three connectors, they, um, if you're doing this on an S10 and trying to get your radio out, these three connectors uh, have such little length that you can't pull the radio out without disconnecting them. Reach your hand on the right side, these release tabs right here, you push them in. All you gotta do is, um, they're, they're all gonna be on the left side, push them in one by one. Push them in, give a little pull. Um, try the middle one first, because it's the shortest. Push on that, give the radio a little tug. If you could push up on the connector, go ahead and it should release. And then do the top one, then do the middle one. Because the shorter it is, more likely pulling on the radio is gonna pull it out. So just do middle, top, and the bottom. And that's what I did to get it out. This one right here, it's kind of a pain. I just used a screwdriver to split between the white and the black part and it came right off. Just pull on the release tab, with this black release tab right here. Oh yeah, lighting's really bad, but I just got a screwdriver underneath here, popped it up, and it came right off. Let's figure out. Uh, it's Chevrolet. This is GM, like I said before. So we got Chevrolet, GMC, you know, all this other stuff. So I'm looking for my year. I'm gonna look for my S10 pickup. 9802. I'm gonna do 86 and 93. And I'm gonna turn to page 26. And these things are pretty standardized. Most car makes don't change much when it comes to the radios, so mounting is pretty simple. So I'm just going to follow the instructions on this page. If you're doing this on an S10, just do your own instructions. Alright, I got what I think is the right brackets. Let's find out if they fit. So this is going to fit awesome, except I got to cut the tabs and I'm not using this one and this one.
and that works. Cool. All right, so I got this thing all mounted. I just followed the instructions. Um, so this should be good to go to go in there. Before we go do that, we gotta do the wiring. So let me show you how to do that. So basically I'll look this up. They do have pictures up, but I like to go on the websites. They tend to be a little bit more accurate, like pictures can be on any vehicle. It's nice about this one. This one isn't in color. A lot of them are in color, but this one's nice because it just gives you all the wire colors. Just go through the list, make sure all these colors are actually on your connectors. If not, go on a different site. Probably another one somewhere around here. See, uh, this is a little bit nicer for this, so I might use this. But, you know, just make sure that it matches your connectors. Some vehicles, um, depending on what packages you might have and what radio you might have, it might have different wire colors. So you gotta make sure that everything's correct before you start splicing things in. Be aware that doing things the way that I'm gonna do it does make it harder to return to stock. If this is a vehicle that you may value to a point or may become a collector, collectible or something, you may not wanna do this this way, but you know, if it's a thousand dollar S10 truck, who cares, you know? So um, let's get to it. So I just went through all this. It took a minute to go through each wire color and match it up. So for you S10 boys out there, these two connectors right here, these are your speakers. So there's no power and ground out of here, no illumination wires out of here. From what this diagram is telling me, now I'm gonna confirm all this because wiring this up wrong can cause me a whole heck of a lot of problems. But this orange wire is supposed to be 12 volt constant. This brown wire right here is supposed to be my dimmer. This fade, very faded yellow is my switch 12 volt. Black is my ground. And this tan right here is supposed to be another dimmer, either uh, no, this is dimmer and that's illumination. I gotta check the list again. So to check all this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconnect the battery. It is safe as long as these wires aren't touching each other, as long as you haven't cut any wires yet, it is safe to plug in the battery. It's just safer to do it when you're pulling stuff apart and when you're cutting wires. So I'm gonna plug it in real quick and I'm gonna put my key in. I'm gonna make sure that well, I have constant 12 volt positive here. I have negative here at the black wire, which I'm very positive it will. I'm gonna have a switched wire, so every time I turn the key on, I have power here, and when I turn the key off, there's no power here. So on most vehicles, any piece of metal, uh, it should be ground to the battery. So I'm gonna pick right here. It's a little bit exposed, these alligator clamps will bite into the paint a little bit, hopefully. Come on. And I'm gonna... It's my handy dandy meter here. Attaching this alligator clamp to my negative lead. If you guys don't know how to use a meter, this is a quick rundown, all right? If you're gonna be looking for voltage, you're gonna use the V with the line on it. This is for an auto ranging meter. So auto ranging meters don't have any, really have any numbers here. So a self range meter, there's gonna be multiple numbers that you gotta choose from. On a car, just choose a 20. With this meter right here, it is auto ranging. It is trying its hardest to find voltage. So now it's down to 200 millivolts. That's what it's trying to find right now. I could leave it as is and it'll auto range, but it annoys me when it does that. I set mine, this is a 20 volt scale. So at this scale, it'll measure from anywhere from zero volts to 20 volts. If I go another decimal place over, it'll measure anything from zero volts to 200 volts. I could use this scale, but it's less accurate. So I go back to the 0.00. 000. If you got a cheap meter from O'Reilly or any auto parts store, they're gonna tend to be a manual range. So you just turn that dial V with a straight line on it at the two at the 20 volt scale. If I change my mind, I'm running my wire straight to the battery because it's close enough. This orange wire, this guy right here, key is not in the ignition. Orange wire right there. I am going to probe this blade here and see here, I have 12 volts all the time. This yellow wire, faded yellow wire, is supposed to have 12 volts switch. Key and ignition, ignition on. Cooling fans turn on, cause you know, race car. This wire should have 12 volts going to it. Oh, I had it. 1.9, yeah, cause everything's on, so. Turn it all off. Check the same wire. Nada. 
So that is indeed 12 volt switch. Now to check if ground is good, all you gotta do is the same thing, but put your lead, your negative lead on the positive of the battery and just check the black wire. One quick side note, when you put your positive, your lead on the positive, this side's exposed, all right? So you gotta be careful that this doesn't touch any piece of metal in the engine bay. If it does, sparks will happen, that wire will catch on fire, and you'll have a really bad time. All right, the middle one is the ground. Look at that, beautiful. All right, so we are good to start cutting, soldering, and all that stuff. Um, this will be a good time to show you how to solder. So let's do that. So I am the main electrical guy in my job, so I keep a pretty good supply of connectors and stuff. When it comes to joining two wires together, there are two heavily discussed ways of doing it. It's very well debated whether you should use a soldering iron, solder, and heat drink, or buck connectors. So. My soldering iron is actually out in the shop. It is getting repaired by Snap-on. It wasn't getting as hot as I wanted it to, so and it was under warranty, so I sent it out. I should get it back by next week. But I also there's also buck connectors. I use two different kinds of buck connectors, and I'll show you them right now. These are your standard buck connectors. I only use buck connectors with heat shrink on them. The reason for that. When you expose wire, you expose them to the element. Especially when you're working with old wire like this, you don't want to deteriorate, deteriorate it anymore. These two are different colors. They come in three main colors, pink, blue, and yellow. You are only gonna really use blue and pink. As you can see, there are different sizes. Pink tends to be for smaller gauge sizes. Uh, so anything bigger than 16, so 18, 22, such and so forth. They do make a smaller one for really, really tiny wires, but you most likely won't use that in a radio. Blue is for about 14 gauge and 16 gauge. I think they say I'm on the actual things, but you can try to use a smaller wire on a blue or a bigger wire on a blue or a bigger wire on the pink. I don't recommend it. They don't seize as well. So to be able to use these, you need a tool. Any auto parts store will have this. This is a crimper set. This is my newer set. I used to run uh, an O'Reilly set. I personally like the ones where the crimper is on the end here. They do make strippers and crimpers all in one, where the stripper part will be up top and the crimper part will be in the bottom. I've had a lot of my connections come loose with those, so I switched to these. Some more leverage on these, you can squeeze them tighter. So I go with a set like this. So basically, you strip your two wires, you put them in each side, crimp and crimp and just like one wire and then you use a, either a mini torch or if you have a heat gun you apply heat to these sides and they shrink up and they seal it up nice and good so i've been dabbling with a new style connector that's been coming out recently these are heat shrink tubes basically it kind of marries the two best things about soldering and heat shrink solder is a soft metal that you heat up and it melts and you get in between the wires and when it cools down, it's stronger than actual wire. So this tube has solder right there in the middle. And the reason why people like a buck connector so much is they're quick. They're quick, they're easy to get in there. They're very versatile. As long as you get a good crimp on them, they're fine. When I train people electrical stuff, I always tell them, I don't care which method you use, as long as the connection is made, it lasts a while, and it doesn't cause us any problems. These make a really good connection. They're very simple to put on. All you have to do is strip your wires on each side, put them on each side, have them meet in the middle. Um, I like to have them mesh. And I just heat this up until I see it melt and I heat each end up. Keep the wires together um, for a while. That's the only drawback to this, is you have to keep the wires kind of in place for a minute just until this cools off, because if you let it pull off a little bit too early, don't give a chance for the solder to melt, uh, cool off, they can split and they can have a bad connection. They come in the same standardization as buck connectors, red and blue is the same as pink and blue. And again, these seal up tightly and they make a good connection. In a future video, I will do a how to solder video. 
Soldering is my personal preference whenever I do radios, just because I know it's a good connection. It's the best way to make a connection in my opinion. It just takes a lot longer. When I'm on a job, when I'm working flat rate, I will use butt connectors if it's, if it's available to me. Just because it's quick, I gotta get the job done. But working on my own stuff, I always try to solder my connections. So this has been installed a couple times. As you can see, it'll be a lot neater on a new radio that you purchase. So most radios will have all of their stuff labeled or they will give you a radio wiring diagram. These colors are pretty standardized. As long as you don't get a really old radio, these wire colors are standardized all over. So you can look up aftermarket radio wire diagram and all these colors are standardized. As you can see, some of my wires are twisted up. Those are my speaker wires. I twist them up because it helps reduce interference. Whenever you have your radio wires going near power wires, you always have a chance of radio interference. This has one extra wire that not a lot of radios have, the pink wire. So this is basically a wire that you, I can't get any good lighting here, huh? So the pink wire basically is a safety wire. It wants you to attach it to a parking brake. So a ground on the parking brake that we absolutely will be attaching this wire to a ground on the parking brake and not the ground on this radio for sure but basically it's the safety features that if you put a dvd in the radio because it is it does have a screen it ensures that you can't watch tv while you're driving that's all it is really shouldn't be watching tv while you're driving i want to state that do not be distracted while you drive especially if you love your car and you love your life and you love the people that are in your car don't be distracted while driving a movie should only be played if for the passengers and who the hell has DVDs anymore anyway so this is kind of redundant. I will be attaching this to the ground just in the off chance I use it but I will not be driving. Red wire is always switched 12 volt so it goes to your ignition switch. This yellow wire is always direct power. Orange is always illumination. In this case I don't think it is. No this is actually uh, for a review. Blue wires uh, they are multifunctional. They usually are an antenna wire for your power antenna if you have one, or they are for your to turn on your amp if you're running an amp. And we'll be using this. This radio has two, so that way you can have both, and that's a pretty nice feature. This brown is for steering wheel switches, so we don't we're not gonna be using that. And then all these twisted wires are my speakers. They're all labeled which one. You do want to get the positives and the negatives all right. If you don't, the speakers won't blow up or anything, but what will happen is your speakers will be echoey because your speakers will be mistimed from each other. So you really want to make sure all these, all the positives and the negatives are right on this. Of course, uh, black is brown. Black is almost always brown on a car. So I'm just gonna go get this in. If I can get a good, couple good shots, I will. But yeah, let's try this. It is noting too, if you do at some point plan to try to return this to stock, don't cut as close as I am to the connectors. Leave yourself some room so and keep the connector so at worst case you can reconnect the old radio if that is something you want to do. I will not have the stock radio ever again so I am kind of close, I don't care. Best strippers Harbor Freight has to offer. The gray is right front, white is left front. Violet or purple is right rear and green is left rear. Left front speaker is tan and gray, tan is positive. Tan and gray. 
over here, I think. What sucks about this is that it is so freaking close. I can't, like, usually there's a little bit of a service loom. There's no service loom with this. I hate it so much. I'm gonna rip it. All right, 10 gray, 10 gray, 10 gray, 10 gray, 10 gray. So it's gonna be a white plane and a white with a black stripe on it. White plane is positive, black stripe is ground. Black is always ground, nine times out of ten. Right front speaker, positive wire is light green, negative is dark, so light is positive. Probably gonna be the other two wires in the same connector that I cut off, yep. Gray is front right. speaker positive brown brown and yellow brown is positive So that freaking wall right there wants to be a Excuse my French, not ready. So, this is what we're gonna do. <sighs> what is it? Oh, that's my freaking vent, isn't it, huh? I can't even cut that. It's gonna have to work. I'm trying to make it work. At this point, I just wanna see this work real quick, so. Plug in the battery, let's see if it works. Everything works as the way it's supposed to. I'm going to scoot the radio so far forward in this adapter. You're gonna see all the clutch and glory of it, but it's gonna work. My advice for anyone watching this video and who hasn't bought their radio yet. You go online, there are these really cheap radios that don't have CD players. Those radios are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use for this truck. Just because they are very short and they're very light. They're half, half the depth of a regular radio. Because this one has a CD player and it also has the flip up screen, it is being nearly impossible. I couldn't see it fit that much better with a regular radio. So I'm gonna make sure everything works. I did a bunch of wiring. I don't wanna to have to redo all that wiring. This radio is gonna go in this truck one way or another. So let me go figure that out. I'm gonna show you guys the result of that. So a couple of things. This trim will not allow this radio to open. So it works, kinda maybe. It turns on, so let me remove this so I can get this to work. Working on a multiple speakers. Hell yeah. So one last thing before I put this thing together. The cigarette lighter was kinda loose. 
instead of buying a new one, um, because I work at this golf cart shop, we have these USBs. I was able to get this thing on. All it's gonna take is me to put a couple of blade connectors, which I already did, onto the two wires. Make sure I know which one's positive and negative, which orange is positive, black is negative. I checked the same way I showed you guys earlier, and I just gotta put all that together. What's up guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, I will have more on this later. I'm currently in another process of moving again. So when I get a chance to, we're gonna do the sound system upgrade. We will be doing the motor upgrade. I got all my parts in. So we, we will be finishing up the motor. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, this thing's just sitting in my bay and I just can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to drop it in. So please leave a like comment and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Bye.